Hey guys, it's competition time. How would you like to be interviewed on the Game Changers Experience podcast as a top thought leader and industry game changer? Well, you can. I'm offering one lucky spot to one lucky listener who'd like to come up onto the show. Now, the great thing about this show is that it's in the top 2.5% global rankings. We're in 43 different countries and we have thousands of downloads from around the world. So if you want to get your message out there in the, in the big wide world, this is a great opportunity to do so. Now, there's a couple of things that you've got to do. Number one is you've got to leave a five-star review on Apple or on Spotify and then send me a screenshot or tag me. You can send me a screenshot to hello at adamstrong.net. It's hello at adamstrong.net. And also buy me a coffee. The link is below. Buy me a coffee. Buy me a coffee based on the value that you get from the show personally. And then we'll be reviewing applicants over the next couple of weeks. And I'll be making an announcement on June 15th on the lucky winner. So listen, good luck. And uh, we'll see you soon. Take care. This is the Game Changers Experience. Deep dive conversations with leading business disruptors, Olympic athletes, celebrities, entrepreneurs, and influencers from around the world. This show will teach you insights about the winning principles in mindset, productivity, marketing, branding, entrepreneurship, business strategy, and more. Hosted by Productivity Authority, business strategist, former elite athlete, author, and public speaker, Adam Strong. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Game Changers Experience with myself, Adam Strong. And today, we have another great show lined up. A really interesting show today because I bought a really special guest that I think is a hot topic at the moment. And, um, and this particular gentleman, his name is called Michael Levette. He is the founder and chief burnout officer of, a, of the uh, Breakfast uh, Leadership uh, Network, which is a San Diego uh, and Toronto-based burnout consultancy. Uh, he's also a best-selling author, a keynote speaker, and, uh, and is also a consultant for some of the top Fortune 500 companies. Uh, he's the author of a, a new book called Burnout, uh, B- Burnout Proof. Is that correct? Have, have I said that correctly? All right, excellent. Yes, you have. Fantastic. And then Michael has spoken to thousands of people around the world, uh, sharing the, the most important things on how to prevent burnout and, uh, and what he's learned from his own personal story as well. So some things we're going to be talking about today, ladies and gentlemen, is um, we're going to be talking about the signs of burnout. But also what we're going to be doing is, because um, considering that most of our listeners are going to be entrepreneurs, we're going to be talking a little bit about how you can prevent burnout happening in your life. So we're going to be talking about a little bit about that, especially when you're wearing so many different hats. Uh, we're also going to be talking a little bit about the, the, uh, the differences, or should we say the, the, uh, the relationship between unhappiness and purpose and burnout and how that kind of correlates we're also going to be talking a little bit about some of the some of the some of the tactics or some of the strategies about how to go from that place of burnout to a place of more purposeful happiness, live a life uh, type of uh, uh, life, if you like. So, um, listen, I'm super excited today. So, without further ado, Michael Levet, how are you doing today? Great, Adam. Great to be with you today. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So, um, yeah, listen, really interesting uh, topic today, and. You know, I was just saying to the audience and, and we were just speaking offline and there must be a story here because when when I think of when when I think of burnout or someone that specializes in burnout, I'm thinking to myself, well, they must have had a really strong story in order to, you know, to transition into becoming a burnout expert. But tell us a little bit about how you how you got into the burnout world. Yeah, my burnout journey, while I thought it was unique, but when I talk to people around the world, I I find that a lot of people have gone through different but similar circumstances that got them to where they are today. And my story started off innocently, quite frankly, and that's what happens with burnout. Sometimes it just starts off innocently. But back in 2007, I was hired as a healthcare executive just outside of Windsor, Ontario, Canada. Uh, I had a lot of startup experience, executive experience and whatnot, but I'd never worked in healthcare before. Hmm. So I had a pretty steep learning curve on learning the nuances of working in healthcare. Using the healthcare system, I think all of us have 
used it from time to time, but working in it is a completely different animal. So for me, just a lot of time and there was a lot of nuances and changes and anybody that's ever launched a startup, you're an entrepreneur, you've launched your own business, you know, the hours are pretty intense, Absolutely. but I was an employee. I was an employee. I wasn't, you know, the owner of this organization. I was an employee, hmm. but I took it upon myself to act as if it was mine. And sometimes that is necessary, but for me, the way that I approached it was definitely wrong. So for a period of two years from 2007 to 2009, I was pretty much working from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. seven days a week consistently. Wow. wow! There was just a lot of work to be done. There was recruitment of physicians and medical staff, site relocation, site negotiations. I had a very proactive board of directors. It was it was set up as a nonprofit organization, so the board of directors having you know their own desires and dreams of what this clinic could be, were pretty active. They were pretty proactive. Um, that's, a, that's a fine way to say micromanaging. Uh, but uh, we'll, we'll call them proactive, just to be polite. I don't want to, I don't want to throw people under the bus. And, and you know, I, I found out just recently that um, the, my, my main boss with the organization um, had, had passed away last year. He was an older oh. gentleman. And, well, uh, but so I, I really want to be respectful and, and, and not say mean things or anything like that. But at the end of the day, you know, there was just a lot of work to be done. And I, I wasn't really good about delegating because I felt, well, everybody else is busy, so I can just do it. And that gets you in trouble, especially as an entrepreneur. Uh, and I know many entrepreneurs, you know, they don't have the revenue stream coming in necessarily to hire a lot of people to help with some tasks that mm. you really should should be delegating but with the advent of online services virtual assistance and all of that there are some affordable options for people so i highly encourage if you're doing everything yourself really take a long hard look and go okay what am i doing that could be done by somebody else and you the the time savings will allow you to focus on the things that only you can do but getting back to my story when you're working those hours, what happens is you start cutting out things in life they enjoy doing because you're just too fatigued and too wiped out uh, to do anything. And that's what started happening with me. And I was making poor choices, making mistakes at work. My nutrition plan was non-existent. I wasn't <laughs> eating anything nutritional. I was you know, eating you know, restaurant food and you know, fast food and, and everything else. And that's not good for you in, in the short term or definitely not the long term. And it all came to a crashing halt in May of 2009, uh, where over a period of 369 days, so just over a year from May 2009 to May 2010, the following things happened to me. I had a heart attack that should have killed me. Holy crap. 17 weeks later, I lost that job that I had uh, because they wanted to go in a different direction. The timing of this was bad because it was 2009 and in the U S and Canada, we were dealing with the great recession. A recession. So yeah. there was, there wasn't a lot of jobs to be found. And I was in Windsor, Ontario, which is across the border from Detroit, Michigan in the U S which is an auto sector area. And the auto sector was in really deep trouble and the U S and Canadian government had to bail out a couple of those organizations. <laughs> Excuse me. They both, you know, one of them general motors for one had filed bankruptcy. So the government had to bail them out to keep them alive. Otherwise mm -hmm. there would have been, you know, hundreds of thousands of jobs lost, you know, across the country yep. and the world and everything else. So not a good place to be unemployed because there mm -hmm. just wasn't a lot of jobs to be found. So it took several months for me to be able to find a new role. Finally, I found a new role, uh, ended up relocating to Toronto. And after I'd been working here for a couple of weeks, I was still commuting back and forth between Toronto and Windsor on Got the it. weekends. It's about a, about a four hour drive. So I'm, I'd, I'd stay up in Toronto during the week and then on the weekend head home. Um, but a couple of weeks into my new role, I get a phone call from my oldest daughter who was 10 at the time. Hmm. And she was crying and I couldn't understand a thing she was saying until finally I was able to get from them that the bank had come and repossessed our family vehicle. Oh. When, when you're unemployed for as long as I was, and I was on heart medication now, uh, that cost over $1,000 a month out of pocket, 
Holy with no God. insurance, Damn. you make choices. You got to eat. You got to take this medication to get yourself healthier. Mm. Well, it's, you, you, other things are going to have to take a back seat. And, you know, we worked with our creditors. We knew, you know, what was going on and we let them know right away. But if you remember, this is during the Great Recession. There was a lot of people doing the same thing and no fault of the bank. You know, when you don't make your payments on things, they reserve the right. It's in the contract to take back the asset. And they Absolutely. did. Mm-hmm. And then a few weeks after that, uh, finally found a place to rent in Toronto for our family. So we moved everybody up. And after we unpacked everything, we realized that we left behind the ladder for our daughter's bunk bed. Hmm. Uh, for some reason, we didn't grab it. It was bright red. You know, I can see how we, <laughs> I can see how we missed it. Yeah, but we forgot that. I think there was a couple other things that we forgot to. I don't remember what those were. But so I was going back to the Windsor area that following weekend. I was going to visit with some friends and tie up some loose ends. And then I said, I'll just swing by the house because we were getting ready to list it on the market for sale Got it. in about another week or so. So I, you know, had the visit with friends and then went, swung by the house to go grab the ladder and whatever else we, we left behind. And I opened up the front screen door and I saw the largest padlock I've ever seen in my life. And the door was you know, basically secured shut. And there was a small sticker on the door that said foreclosure. Holy so, so in a year, heart attack that should have killed me, job loss, car repossession, home foreclosure. And all of those things happened to me because I was burned out. My burned out state created all of those scenarios for me. And I I say this, it was the greatest thing that could have ever happened to me because it gave me that kick in the backside and said, okay, the way that I was living was not sustainable. Mm -hmm. You know, 40 40 year olds should not have heart attacks. It just shouldn't. I did. Um, I did. And it was the ultimate wake up call. And I had a choice. Either A, I could continue down that path or I could choose differently. And before I continue, I always want to frame this for entrepreneurs and everybody in general. I needed to reinvent my life, but 99% of people that are burned out do not need to reinvent your life. You just need to make a couple adjustments in a couple areas. Mm. And if you do that, it has such a huge ripple effect on every other aspect of your life that Mm. you will feel better it just will be a better situation for me. So that's how I got in, you know, my burnout experience. And then fast forward a few years um, after going back into healthcare, my parents wanted to have me committed. And they're like, are you crazy? You're going to work <laughs> in the field that almost killed you. And I said, I'm going to do it better this time. And I did. I was a lot better. I had boundaries around my work when I worked and when I didn't, you know, I, I was a lot better at delegation. Some say too extreme where basically if anything landed on my desk, I would say, okay, who besides me could work on this? And if somebody came to mind, guess what? They're getting it. <laughs> As to that with caveat though, because what you find, and this is what happens in a lot of organizations mm. is leaders will over delegate things to their staff and burn their staff out because they're overwhelming with all this work. And as a leader, and I admit this, often we suck at keeping track of what we delegate. We, we realize, wait a minute, I just gave Adam his 15th task this month. You know, and, and you're like, and, and you're going, okay, everything I get, there's usually a pretty tight deadline. I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna do 15 things when the clock in time tells me I'm gonna be lucky to get six mm-hmm. of those done. And as again, leaders, we we're not good at keeping track of all those things. We just see it on our desk. We're like, we got to get rid of this. What do we do with it? And you know, that's the whole, that's the whole office game. You get a piece of paper. I got to move this somewhere. It's got to be, someone's got to be done with this. And we, we do something with it. And again, managers and leaders sometimes are really bad at keeping track of how much they've delegated and they overwhelm their employees which is why we're seeing the great resignation and burnout in teams and in organizations and, and people doing everything that they're doing is just because there's just too much work and not enough people. And, you know, that's a resource problem for organizations to figure out. Yeah, no, I agree. And, and, and it's interesting because uh, I was listening very attentively there because, I mean, that's a great story and I'm sorry it happened to you, but I guess it was kind of this, uh, like you had mentioned, a realization 
right? It was kind of like the ultimate realization that if I don't make some changes, serious changes, choices and habits and whatever it might be, then, uh, hey, it could lead to death ultimately, which is not saying that you, which is probably saying that everyone fears. But I guess the other thing as well, how did that kind of, from from your perspective, what sort of knock-on effect did that have on things like relationships? Because relationships must be extremely important. I mean, I mean, we interestingly enough, because you talked a little bit about when you work for a company, which is kind of more entrepreneurial rather than entrepreneurial, which is, you know, but I guess in a way, very similar types of, you know, uh, fundamental uh, skill sets, if you like. Do you know what I mean? It's it, They're very kind of fundamental skill sets and stuff. Um, well, what, how did you, um, what did you experience with regards to relationships and things like that? Well, what, what sort of knock-on effect did it have? Yeah, during my burnout state of that buildup over a few years, you know, I was very irritable, uh, very mm. short-tempered. Um, you know, I, little things that really shouldn't set me off did. Uh, I quit doing things in life I enjoyed doing. So that means I wouldn't go to sporting events with friends or when opportunities came up to go see a concert, I'd be like, nah, I don't feel like doing it or going out to dinner. It's like, you know, we'll do it next time. So, you know, I en- ended up being a little bit more isolated. You know, I guess I, I was, I was doing pandemic living before it was cool. Uh, it was just, you know, one of those things where I just wasn't going out and doing things because I was too fatigued from working and that obviously impacts it and people quit asking and then, mm. you know, relationships at home get, you know, get impacted a little bit. You know, your, your kids, you know, tend to be, you know, a little bit, you know, maybe not as bold to ask for things uh, or, or they, you know, would be, you know, they'd ask their mom instead of me for something or, you know, a variety of different things. So it definitely has an impact on it. And, it also, you know, when you're burned out, you, you know, one of the signs, not to jump ahead, but one of the signs of burnout is if you're not getting good sleep and you haven't been sleeping well for, for some time, um, it, without getting good sleep, your cognitive ability gets impacted, your relationships, pattern recognition, you start making more mistakes, your mm-hmm. digestive system gets screwed up. There's so many things that get impacted by a lack of good sleep uh, and you know, burnout can create that because you're, you're stressed, you're fatigued, you're wiped out. You're, you're, mm-hmm. you're trying to figure out how am I going to get these 15 things done when I only have time for six, yep. you're, 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 you're going up against a mountain that is not going to move. So uh, it, it's, it's definitely a, a challenging thing for a lot of people. Yeah, no, that is, that's some good, there's some good pointers there. Um, it, it's interesting because, you know, it, when it comes to, um, I was going to say, because I want to go back to a point that you made of, you know, when you get invited to, I don't know, events or whatever it might be in because you're too fatigued. But also there's a lot of psychology that goes around this, doesn't there? It's like kind of like, it's not that, not that you just generally don't want to hang out with them, but also there's a lot of maybe judgments that you create in your own head. And lo- normally they're like completely, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They're made up in your own head. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Oh, definitely. Yeah. When a lot of times when people burn out, again, as I said earlier on, it happens innocently. Burnout doesn't happen Mm. overnight. You know, burnout happens. It's prolonged stress that overwhelms you. You're fatigued mentally and physically. So it's not something that happens overnight. How long does it take? Depends on the person, but in many cases it can take several weeks to several months or potentially several years. Mm. But what happens is, And I see this a lot. It's not exclusive to driven startups or entrepreneurs or business leaders, but I do see it a lot where you tend to be type A personality. You're very successful. You've been very successful in your life. You launched your own business. It's growing. It's starting to do well, but you have this, this, sometimes this back of the head fear that's all going to come crumbling down. Yeah. So you, you push yourself more and you, you start, short changing yourself on those things that are good for you. Mm-hmm. You know, when I hear the phrase self-care, a lot of people think, are we talking about yoga, meditation? <laughs> sure. That, that's great. But you know what? Doing things in life you enjoy doing is self-care, mm-hmm. whether it's going to a concert or out to dinner, or going on a trip or watching Netflix or, you know, 
the new season of Doctor Who's coming, whatever. <laughs> you know, it, it's you know, it, what it's like, okay, let's go. You know, okay, I went on another new doctor. Didn't we just switch doctors? You know, so, uh, you know it's like that's well, you know, it just happens. It's it, that's that's what happens in, in, in cinema, things change. Love it. But but ultimately you start shortchanging yourself because you're working too hard mm-hmm. and you got more to do. So the the harmony. You know, we hear the phrase work-life balance. I'm not a, I'm not a fan of balancing work-life. You can't. It doesn't work. It's like trying to balance an egg. It's like take an egg, have it stand straight up. If it does, throw that egg out because it's there's something wrong with it. It shouldn't do that. So that's the same thing. It's like work and life flow together. We, we try to separate them. And yes, you need to have boundaries around when you work and when you don't. But it's still you. Yeah. It's, you're still that person that's doing it. You're doing a vocation, you're working, you're using your skills, whether it's physical, mental, or both to create something or produce something. Uh, and that's part of you. I wanted I think, to, what, it's, yeah, interest, it's, in, it's interesting because I, I wanted to, I, it, there was a thought that just came into my mind and, and I, I thought I'd kind of bring it up. So, I want to quickly share share a quick story with uh, not one last story, but I wanted to quickly share something with you, and I mm-hmm. wanted to ask you, like in terms of like the big difference between someone that is stressed and burnout, because the thing is, if I go through, I don't know, if I go go through the period of my of my life, whether it be you know running your own business, you know, because I got four kids, I run three businesses. I'm in multiple different countries around the world. Hey, that's enough to even want to burn out, right? <laughs> or whatever it is. But there's a lot of stress involved. So one mm-hmm. thing that really happens to me is that I start to lose my memory. Like I literally, I literally, because I'm so overwhelmed with so much to do or whatever it is. Um, but it, it doesn't feel like I'm burnt out. It feels something else. But from your perspective, um, being a burnout expert, does that mean that I'm burnt out if I'm experiencing those or they kind of more symptoms? What's your thoughts on that? What are the big difference between stress and burnout? Well, I, the, the memory situation being forgetful or not being able to see things is definitely a sign that there could be, you could have a burnout system or um, symptom type of yep. situation. Sure. Um, because when you're fatigued and you're overwhelmed, then you know, other things are happening. And again, if you're not sleeping well, that impacts your ability to have your cognitive awareness working and mm. all that other stuff. Biggest difference between stress and burnout, you know, stress tends to be a shorter term type of situation to be a stressful situation. Let's say you've got a stressful week, you know, I'm, I'm just coming off a, a couple of weeks of some intense travel mm. in the U S where I, I spoke at four conferences in two weeks and two of them were on the West Coast, two of them were on the East Coast. And of course, they didn't line up right. So there were two weeks of cross-country flights type of situation mm-hmm. where, you know, in, in, in the ideal world, it would be, hey, can you guys shift your schedule a week? So the West <laughs> Coast is, doesn't work that way. You right. can always ask. They don't <laughs> usually do that because there's this whole thing about event coordination and hotels and food orders and, you know <laughs> 2000 people that have already bought their plane tickets for that day and not a week later for the convenience of me so you know i ask cheekily but it, it, i i know this situation but, <laughs> but i knew you know that those were going to be well you know i want to say stressful not like overwhelming stress like oh this is the worst thing ever but i knew there was going to be an element of stress because of the protocols of flying and coordination and making sure that you you have everything you need your presentations are ready mm. you know where you're going you know what time you're speaking you figure out okay what time zone are they in because sometimes you can get in some states so you know some states you know not many but there are still a few that don't observe daylight savings time so you're thinking okay well they're three hours behind right well they don't observe daylight savings time so it's only two kind of important if you're supposed to be on stage at 3 (laughs) p.m you need to know what time it is now thankfully you know smartphones and all that will 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 help you and they'll do that but 
you know, he's, you know, trust but verify was something that President Ronald Reagan used to say a lot. <laughs> um, but so in that type of situation, that's stressful. Did I burn out from that? No, because I knew, you know, in order to deal with stressful situations, you know, it's going to be stressful. You don't have to stress out about it being stressful. And for me, it's like, okay, I know what I'm coming up against. And I knew, you know, I knew well in advance what my schedule is going to be like. So, okay, what do I need to do? And make sure that you have, you know, eat the foods that are good for me that I like. Make sure you do that as best you can, which is challenging during travel, but mm-hmm. you can still do it. Um, get your rest. You're going to be in a different time zone. So your body is going to be like, mm, I'm tired. It's like, it's five o'clock. You, you shouldn't be going to bed at five o'clock. You know? So it's like adjust, accord, you know, adjust accordingly what you need to do or get a really good sleep mask and close the drapes and then sleep. But then when you wake up at three o'clock and you're upset that the restaurant downstairs doesn't open for another four hours, you know, have, have some <laughs> snacks or something to tide you over until you can get it. So, you know, different challenges like that. These are all first world problems, by the way. You know, there's you know, <laughs> some people that aren't sure where they're going to be able to find food tomorrow. But, but knowing that, you know, there's gonna be a stressful situation. Now, if that's every day, every week for somebody all the time, then what you do is you, you learn how to adapt around it. You know, okay, with your three businesses, the demands of having children, all the travel, all of that, you, it's real. There's no, it, it's real. And, and understanding, okay, this is, this is the situation. How am I going to approach this? What, what are some things that I can do to make sure that I am my best mental and physical self to deal with that? So getting the good rest, eating the foods that are right and good for you. Yeah. And I, I, a real side story, uh, I had a food intolerance test done last year. It was, yeah, it was last year. Mm-hmm. It tested me on over 250 foods. Wow. And there was, and the report's great. It gives me a green section, yellow section, and red section. And so I know what foods I have an intolerance to. There were some that I knew, and there were some that I was unaware of. Huh. But adjusting my diet to minimize or eliminate those foods, then, especially when you're traveling, you realize, okay, I shouldn't eat that because that's going to throw my sleep off and you know my sleep's going to be impacted anyway because i'm not in a bed that's mine and like you know the all all the nuances of hotels and whatnot so it's more or less i like using the phrase you know life hacking so i'm, I'm hacking my life in a way to say okay i'm going to do everything i can to be successful in doing what i need to do when i am in this town whether it's phoenix atlanta los angeles burlington vermont detroit houston minneapolis Chicago, wherever I happen to be. Right. Okay. What do I, what do I need to do? Okay. When am I doing this? And, and you just basically create it. it. If you like making food, if you're a chef or a baker or something like that, you get all the right ingredients to make the meal or the dessert or whatever you're making be the best version of it. It's the same thing with yourself. What are the ingredients that I need to make sure that I can be the best dad? to be the best business owner, to be good for this meeting, to deal with this particular business, to help it navigate through whatever it's doing. As an entrepreneur, it's the same thing. What do I need to do to be the best entrepreneur I can be for this business, to give it a chance to do what I want this business to do? Mm-hmm. And you know, these are, these are conversations you have with yourself. You gotta be non-judgmental because mm-hmm. we beat ourselves up way too much, especially as business That's owners me. and just in life. That's yeah, me. Full disclosure, ladies and gents. Full disclosure. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm guilty as charged too. And I realize, and I take a step back and I go, okay, where is my business today? Mm. Where was my business a year ago? Mm. Am I further along? Yes. You grew your business or you made your business get closer to the ultimate goal of what you wanted to do in a pandemic. <laughs> Standing ovation for yourself. It's, it has been challenging for a lot of people. It's been stress, prolonged stress turns into burnout. This pandemic has been very prolonged and very stressful. Guess what? That's why we're seeing so many people burning out, not just from a work standpoint, which typically is where burnout tends to flare up, Mm. but life, you know, all the things we've had to deal with the, 
we're open, we're closed. You can't do this. You can do that. You can go here. You can't go there. And all the, and the ever changing things yesterday, you know, I live in a condo building and have a dog. So I'm walking with the dog yesterday afternoon and there's a little parkette area and uh, part of the pandemic. They actually had ironically, cause it was outside, which was kind of mind boggling. They had it taped off because That's... there was the ordinance. That's which was crazy. absolutely asinine. It was asinine. Okay. I, I'm trying not to be critical of my government. I mean, it's too easy to be that, but they had it taped off for a period. And it's so like, stupid. So stupid. And, and of course, it's, the tape's gone now. And, you know, you, you, it's hard to find, at least in Toronto, yep. the, the, the remnants of it. I mean, yes, there's still some stickers on the floor in some places, sure. and some businesses sure. have plexiglass in between and all that. But the signs are fading away, yep. but the traumatic experience that we've and all faced with this it's thing is still there. And, and that's a, a good colleague of mine that works in trauma and all of that. Mm. And one of the things that she told me was so many of us have not mourned yet. We haven't mm. mourned what we've experienced these last couple of years. Yep. We, yeah. just, we just continue and we need to heal from that. Yeah. Um, you're bang on the money. The I other... think you're bang on the money. I, I, I agree with you on that. And, 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 and it's, and the world is going to continue to evolve, ladies and gentlemen, by the way, uh, as it always does. Um, but actually, actually there was, there was something that I, I wanted to ask you around the whole kind of like, especially with your experience in burnout, right? If you, you've come like, you now know, you know, being a, a burnout expert, you now know the signs because we've discussed some of the signs earlier on right digestion and sleep uh, you know a really important things kind of warning signs but one of the things that i wanted to really ask you was how did you and and interestingly enough and maybe maybe a good friend of mine who's actually listening to this because he's actually suffered from burnout I don't know if he actually realized it but he suffered from burnout um heart palpitations major health challenges uh, in his 50s lovely bloke and, um, you know, and just been working his butt off for like the last, I don't know, 20 odd years. And it's all catching up with him. But I wanted to dedicate this question to him more specifically. How did you, from your perspective, come to terms with the fact that, you know what, you've, you're now, you, you know, you realize that you're suffering from burnout. And I'm sure there's a lot of psychology that goes with this, right, with this whole kind of you know, I'm a failure type of thing. You, you know, what are some of the things that you were talking to yourself, whether it be your inner critic um, talking to you, whether it be, um, I don't know, I, I, how did you deal with the terms of burnout? And, and what, what, do, what do you, any advice for people that are going through that motion right now? And what, what is it that you have for them? Well, hopefully they don't go through the, you know, the introspective, work of wow i was or i am burned out when you're laying on a hospital bed and you're gonna have stents put into an artery to unblock the artery because you had a heart attack hopefully it doesn't get to that state hopefully you figured it out before you get there <laughs> um just saying you know I, it's not not wasn't a fun experience to say the least but for me you know, and, and i'll frame it this way mm. People that are burning out or are burned out, you can actually stop the burnout sooner than you think. Mm -hmm. But the deeper work is figuring out what caused you to burn out. What was it? And that can be a deeper dive than many people may be comfortable to do. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes, as I alluded to before, type A driven entrepreneurs, people that are strong willed and really driven. Yeah, you know, success at no cost, you know, at whatever cost. Mm. Well, there is a cost. It's you. Um, and sometimes you do that, and you go, okay, why? Why is it important for me to have this business be successful? Why? You know, and mm. and you got to start digging in and start, you know, and in therapy they call it, you know, chunking up and chunking down types of questions, <laughs> where you ask yourself. Well, why did you feel that? Well, why was that important to you? And it, it's, it can be a deep dive and sometimes it may get a bit emotional, especially as, you know, because I have kids, 
and right. I want to leave a legacy for them and I want to leave a business successful so they don't have to struggle as hard as I did. Well, I mean, that's very noble for parents to do that. And I get that, you know, my parents were just the same and I'm sure their parents and going on and on and on always want to do that. But again, as humans, we we're here for a reason. Um, and sometimes we got to make our own way. Yes. It's nice to get some guidance and some helping hands from time to time, but mm -hmm. ultimately it's on us. Yeah. Um, unless you're, you, you're born into a very affluent family situation and you never have to worry about financial related matters, but still there's work you got to do. Absolutely. But, for, but you know, the, the deeper work is to figure out again, why, why did I burn out? What were my choices? What were my beliefs? What were my habits? Cause that's what happens. Mm -hmm. You don't burn out overnight, your choices, the decisions you make, whether it's where you want to live, what you kind of work you do, those are all choices. And those choices sometimes have consequences. Yep. And it, it's like going into a business and you're launching a business without a business plan. Okay. Any of us that have done that before, and I'm guilty, I did once something like that. And of course, the results turned out exactly as they should have. Um, not good. But I, ultimately, it boils down to when you're doing that work and you're trying to figure out why I burned out, you know, the, the, the signs are there. Uh, if you know what the signs are and it's a lack of sleep and, you know, bad choices, mistakes at work, you know, forgetfulness and, you know, irritation, all these things, those are the signs. But ultimately it's like, okay, well, you know, why was this important to me? Okay. What could I do differently yep. to get at the result that I want? Uh, and what are some steps that I could take? Yes, we all want our business to be successful the day we open. And on, you can ask Jeff Bezos at Amazon. Wasn't successful in the beginning. Nope. Um, they, they lost a ton of money. Now they're making a lot of money. So it, but it took time. It was, was not an overnight situation. It's, mm -hmm. It took decades. Hopefully for businesses that like, like yours, it won't take you decades to get to the level you want, unless you want it to get to Amazonian type levels, then yeah, I probably will just based on, on, on the situations at hand. You, 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 so there's a lot of, one bit of advice I like giving people is like frequently check in with yourself and ask, ask yourself how you're doing mm. and don't, don't have it be a 10 second question and answer period. Don't no, take, say, take some time. You do a reflection period. Yeah, I, I, I do it a couple times a year at minimum. Um, where, you know, maybe, you know, midpoint of the year, like, okay, where's the business? Okay. Mm -hmm. Where, where's me, you know, my, my personal life, where's my, how's my physical health? How's my relations? How's my mental health? You know, what, what are some, you know, it's been you know, not the easiest of years, you know, yeah. starting off to, and it's lots of for, things going on. I was in the world, say, but it's, it's, it was, it's, it's also a very great for, uh, awareness. Do you know what I mean? Like you, you, yeah. what you're talking about is awareness, right? It's like kind of like, you know, those check-ins, not just with yourself in terms of all the areas of your life, but it's, it, it, it kind of makes you step back and open your eyes. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like, oh, oh wow. I need to make some adjustments here, right? It's kind of like, oh, I need to reprogram myself or whatever it is. But I think that that's what kind of what you're saying, right? Yeah. And it, it's a good exercise for you. And again, the, you, you couple it and what I do with it is, uh, you know, you, you have goals, you have your life goals and professional goals, write those down, look at them a lot for your business. And you see, you've got three of them. So it'd be three different meetings with yourself or your team combination thereof. But you, you bring out, okay, this is our targets that we want to hit this year. Where are we? Okay. What's the difference? Okay. What are some reasons? I'm sure there's many um of why or why not you've hit the targets or exceeded the targets or you're way low um, and again do it in a non-judgmental more of a i like to approach things with the level of curiosity like nice. the curiosity of a three-year-old you know always, <laughs> always inquisitive why what's this why we, we for some reason we stopped doing that and while as a parent 
it can get a little tiring yeah. to, you know, do this, but as a business owner and entrepreneur, ask those questions. Why is this not taking off? And again, don't beat yourself up. You know, yeah. it's like, okay, I spent a bazillion dollars on Facebook ads and I got three clicks. What <laughs> happened? Well, I, I'm not a Facebook ad expert, but I'm going to say, you might have been targeting the wrong audience or the message didn't hit Absolutely. at the times that you'd be. There's a lot of moving parts with those things. And so yeah. it's like, okay, well then you know, maybe next time we go, maybe a little softer approach and yep. look, start off a little small, put it out there, see anybody like this. And yep. Absolutely. If nipples, then great. If not, then you, then you go, okay, next. You know, it's interesting. Gotta, yeah. it's, it's interesting, you know, um, and, and, and but I also think that you can also overthink things. Do you know what I mean? It's like, okay, you know, and, and you know, again, it, I suppose it all depends on how you're wired as well. My, now, my other thing, and I, I guess wanted to ask you another question around the whole kind of, this is, this is more of a myth more than anything else. Well, from mm -hmm. my perspective, it's a myth. How do you tackle, if someone's already in the burnout phase, right? And they're like, oh, shit, right. I'm kind of like, you know, I, I'm, I'm exhausted, got no energy, so forth, so forth. How do you actually tackle burnout? Like as, as a lot of people, especially if you're not burnout, it's like, well, why don't you just take a two week vacation or two week holiday? Uh, yeah, that'll sort you out. That'll sort you out. It's no problem at all. I mean, let's deal with that situation right now. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, the two-week vacation, there's a reason why so many people are afraid to take vacations is because for those two weeks, all the work that they do is not getting done. So mm. they were already backlogged when they left, and now they're backlogged, and they just added two weeks to it because, mm. unfortunately, many organizations, you know, for a variety of reasons, of course, are not staffed properly and haven't been for decades. True. Uh, and, and, that's, and we're seeing it now with great resignation. People are leaving companies uh, because they're overwhelmed and then what happens they leave then the colleagues that are behind guess what their workload just got piled up because they haven't hired anybody yet because they can't find anybody that wants to work that type of job right now so it's it's a mess but to get back to your question what are some things you can do to stop burnout in its tracks i've talked about it before get good sleep yeah. really figure out a way to get the best sleep you can and that means and I know sometimes it can be difficult, but spend the best money you can on the most comfortable mattress for you because everybody has differences on what type of mattress they want. Spend the most money you can on a bed and your pillow and your bedding because think about it. Where do you spend the most consecutive hours in, of your day in one spot? It's your bed. It's where you sleep. Spend the money there. Yeah, I know the the brand new this device or this new phone <laughs> or this new television. Awesome. You want, you know, you, you finally saved up enough money to get that Bentley. Great. You know what? Maybe get a, a gently used Bentley and, and save those few thousands of dollars and invest 100%. in, you know, proper bedding. So bedding is one. I, I also talked about the nutrition thing, yep. you know, find, find the foods that are right for you. I'm not going to tell you don't eat fast food or any of that other stuff, but figure out what foods give you that natural energy boost and not nice. the caffeine and all that, but find the foods that you really like. And after you eat it, you feel good. And that may mean you need to track, you know, the foods you eat and get a food diary. And that could just be a piece of paper and you say, okay, I ate this there. How do I feel? Of course, there's a ton of apps on, on Absolutely. phones now that you could use as well and just track it and, and, and keep track of how you're feeling. Because nice. if you feel lethargic, then, and then your body's using that energy to deal with that lethargic feeling instead of other things that it should be doing, which wears you down and all of that. Mm -hmm. the, the biggest thing I, I find that is so helpful for people, and even if you're working a ton of hours and doing a ton of travel and you got a bunch of businesses and all of that, yep. is make sure you schedule things in life that you enjoy doing. Because those get cut out when you're overwhelmed and you're overworking. True. You quit going on your nature trail hike. You quit going to have your biweekly coffee meeting with your buddy. You quit going to the sporting event. You could be a season ticket holder, you know, 
so you know your your teams in English Premier League and you've got season tickets if you're not going that makes me mad because I'd love to go <laughs> uh, uh, but you know I, I don't know if people over in England it's like oh, when you're down let me know we'll, we'll see if we can get you a ticket and like <laughs> that's like well I got to get it over there first you know and all that but but people quit doing things in life they enjoy doing because they're too tired and they're working too much yeah. and there may be situations where you can't allocate three or four hours on a particular night to go to an event because of commitments, whether it's a work commitment, a family commitment, whatnot. Yep. Fine. That's going to happen. But those other things in life you enjoy doing, which can only take maybe an hour, maybe half an hour, maybe even less, continue to do those things. Even nice. if you have to cut it back, you know, if you're too busy to have a 15 minute or excuse me, 30 minute coffee meeting with your buddy, cut it down to 15. I know that sounds silly, but at least do it because yeah. you're going to get that boost, that energy boost. And you're like, okay. And sometimes it could just be a venting session. It's like, mm -hmm this client is doing this and it's eating up all my time and I want to do this. And I had to, you know, I had to sell my tickets to this event because I couldn't go because they couldn't make up their mind on what in, you know, marketing program they wanted to go to. They've only looked at it 16 times, you know, it's, <laughs> and you're just venting, you know, and yeah. you know, we love customers. They pay us and all that, but sometimes you guys irritate us. Okay. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> so, so it, it's, you, you go through it, but continue to do things. And even, you know, sitting on your balcony or your patio, you, you know, for a morning or night or, you know, sipping tea or something. Yep. Yeah. You can still be working, but get out there, you know, build in some breaks because you know, mm -hmm. you know, like, I don't have time to take breaks. So, like then you really need to take a break because Absolutely. you're going to miss things. Your pattern reckon if you're too fatigued, you're not going to see things. Yep. My first career was accounting. So I knew if I'm looking at a spreadsheet and I can't find the error in the spreadsheet, I knew I have to step away from this. I cannot, I'm not seeing it. Yeah. I'm going to go outside. I'm going to go, you know, get a glass of water. I'm going to talk with a colleague that I like talking with. We're going to talk about something that's completely not work related. Mm -hmm. you know, go, go back to it. You know, you know, walk, go in the bathroom, wash my face. Of course, with us, we can wash the whole head. It's great. You know, it's a good refresher. You know, I, I was in a lot, this is probably too much information, but I was in a washroom, public washroom once and I, I went and washed my face and I washed my head too. So, I mean, I completely washed everything to refresh myself. Right. And there was a guy, there was a guy there that had some male pattern baldness and he looked at me and he says, you sold me. And I'm like, I, I don't remember owning you. It's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like sold what? I said, I've been fighting of shaving my head because I, I wasn't sure how I was going to look. But seeing you do that and the refreshment you got from that, I'm shaving my head. I'm like, <laughs> like what, so I, I said, I, I told him, welcome to the no shampoo club. And then, you know, and then I don't know if he did or not, never saw that person again, but you know, it was just one of those. So oh, funny. Okay. But you know, it's, that's refreshing to me just to, yeah. you know, a couple of minutes just to go, you know, walk, yeah. freshen up a little bit. And it's, just that those little mini breaks just yeah. you know, they don't need to be this you know i need to take a three-hour break maybe you, know, you need to but there's something else that kind of um crossed my mind actually because i i know we kind of touched on it at the very beginning but you're a big fan of setting boundaries right you know setting boundaries so when it comes to boundaries like especially especially with especially with our, our listeners right and i think it's important to set boundaries not just in your personal life, but in your professional life. So all areas of your life, how do you go about setting boundaries? What, and any advice to people that would set boundaries just really, really quickly. Yeah. You have to have those conversations with your family, with your employers, your teams. And sometimes it's difficult at first to establish them, especially if you're in a place that you've been at for a while, if it's a new job, then yeah, you can lay it out. But we're seeing, especially in the US and in Canada, and I'm guessing around the world too, mm. we're starting to see a realization that these wonderful devices that I call my eye binky, it's my brother's, <laughs> my brother's nickname that he gave my phone because I'm always on it like a baby with a pacifier. So it's my eye binky. These are great devices yep. because they allow you to work anywhere at any time. 
but they have a negative side effect. You can work anywhere at any time. And that's our problem. We don't shut off. We don't take a break. We need to have boundaries around when we're available and when we're not. And as we get more and more global in the work that we do, yes, I can't work at two o'clock in the morning, Eastern time. If I'm in the Eastern time zone for somebody that's in New Zealand or Australia and, and they're like well into their work day. Right. And, right. and it's like, I, that's not going to work. So you know, my, I have a signature in my email. It says, I am sending this email at a time that's convenient for me. I expect you to read it at a time that's convenient for you. Same thing with the work like and it. same thing with all the other stuff, set boundaries around when you work and when you don't, and make sure you have, you know, you talk with that. And, and if you're approaching your boss on saying, I want to do great work. Mm. So in order for me to do great work, I need to have some time to rejuvenate and refresh and take care of myself and do things outside of work. Um, let's come together and figure out what that can look like. Yeah. And most decent bosses are going to be completely in and agreement I think and hopefully they're going to do it. I think it's important also, also to make sure that you've got that, you know, um, that you communicate, you know, and, you know, because people are not mind readers. Well, the last time I looked, people aren't mind readers, but <laughs> well, that's kind of my thought. Well, yeah, you know, and, and anything to add to that? I, I think it, it goes the same thing with, you know, families. And I know a lot of us that were working remotely during the pandemic ran into a lot of these things because our family wanted us True. for something. And we're in the middle of our work day or we're in the middle of a project and mm -hmm. everybody's hours were, were thrown off. So the same thing goes there. It's like, have the, have those ongoing communications it's not one meeting it's an ongoing thing and just check in and say this is how things are going mm -hmm. this is how i'm feeling get more you now for me after my cardiac event i became really self-aware of how i feel mm -hmm. and i think a lot of people unfortunately aren't really fully aware of how they're feeling yeah physically and mentally they think i'm tired or i'm hungry okay that's mm -hmm. that's infant level comprehension yeah. you got to go a little bit deeper now Absolutely. and get really understanding on how you're feeling and you have those daily check-ins so you can kind of adjust your cool. days accordingly mm -hmm. that makes a big difference love it love it love it love it well listen I, I know that we could probably talk for hours guys and i hope that what you're listening to is really giving you a kind of more of a what i call a self-awareness tool more than anything else because it's a fascinating um topic and um something that we really haven't spoken about but it's it's been great to speak with you michael on this topic because i think you know you've given a real depth understanding and you've spoken a lot about your personal story so i just want to say thanks very much for doing that for us thank you it's been my pleasure and if you if um for you guys that are listening in uh to the show and want to contact michael then probably the best things to do is to contact uh to to, to click on one of the links below message him uh reach out to him uh drop a personal message if you if you want to connect with them on, on linkedin or whatever it might be and just mention this podcast so that they can put two and two together so again just want to say thanks very much to you michael really appreciate your time today thank you and you guys, uh, if you have any questions, again, reach out to Michael. I'm sure that all in, in his due time uh, and uh, he will uh, obviously he will reciprocate and, and, and responding kindly. So listen, guys, hope you've enjoyed today's show and uh, we'll see you again on the next Game Changers experience. Take care and we'll see you soon. Cheers now. Hey, guys, I just want to say thank you so much for listening to today's episode on the Game Changers experience. I would be gratefully appreciated if you could leave a good or a bad review. And that's a matter one or a five star review, whichever you prefer on any of the platforms, whether it be on Apple, whether it be on Spotify, Podchaser, etc. And please leave a testimonial or review about our podcast. And if you have enjoyed our podcast, then I look forward to seeing you on the next Game Changers experience. Take care. See you soon, etc. And please leave a testimonial or review about our podcast. And if you have enjoyed our podcast, then I look forward to seeing you on the next Game Changers experience. Take care. See you soon.